Well, good morning, and uh, it's good to see you again this morning. Uh, throughout this summer, we're looking at uh, why are we here? What's St Swithin's all about? We're going to spend some time looking at our vision and values that we started to look at when we went away at Sidholm last year. And it was clear from the feedback from within the church and outside the church that there was something that we, wasn't, we weren't communicating clearly enough. That the church is here for God. That God is a central character. It's not about us. We're not the story. St Swithin's exists to display God's splendour. That's how Isaiah captures it in beautifully in Isaiah 61 verse 3. Displaying God's splendour. Jesus quotes these verses right at the beginning of his earthly, earthly ministry. The Westminster Catechism, as we come to know, states that what is the chief end of mankind? It's to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. During the great Reformation of the Church, the phrase that was used throughout the Reformation was simply this, soli deo gloria, for the glory of God alone. We're here, we exist to display God's wonder, his majesty, his glory and his splendour. Our vision cannot be narrow, small and confined, with the impression of shrinking, of being squeezed into a tight space, but must reflect the vastness and great abundance of God's heart, of God's being and the fullness of life that God comes and brings. I wonder what you think of when you think of something glorious, something wonderful, something majestic or something with splendour. Some of you maybe think of the sunsets that have been happening over the last few weeks in Bath, thinking they're amazing. As a family, we've been enjoying watching during this time a TV programme called Race Across the World, where uh, couples go across the world, across South America, and try and get to one end. And this week, one of the couples... Uh, visited the Iguazu Falls in South America on the, uh, the border of Brazil and Argentina. It's one of the most beautiful and breathless sights I think I've ever had the privilege to see. It left them and it left me virtually speechless. It was so beautiful as simply all you could do was gaze in wonder and splendour at the beauty in front of you. See, when Christians encounter beauty and wonder in the world, we don't worship the created. We worship the creator behind us. It points us to the majesty, the wonder, the glory and the splendour of our creator God. The God in his infinite love for creation created the world for us to enjoy in partnership with his good plans and his purposes so that we would join in the eternal dance and participate in the life that God has called us to with the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. This morning, do you have a sense of the splendour of God's fa God the Father's love for you, his unconditional love for you? Do you know that God still has and always or always had good plans for your life? Does God's loving care Shape the way you treat others and behave this week. So I also wonder about whether you've had heroes in your life. I mean, people who you really admire, people whose words you hang on, the people who, a uh, number of people who I um, got to know in Winchester, a group of businessmen, were real fans of the person who partly founded uh, Apple, Steve Jobs. He's been an extraordinary successful uh, businessman and influential and his effect on the way that we live on our world today has been really really profound and for this group of people they hung on his words they listened to his lectures they were followers of Steve Jobs this Easter we've celebrated the person of Jesus Christ the only son of God who lived a perfect life and died a terrifying death taking on himself all our sin, all our guilt, all our shame, all the brokenness, darkness, evil of the world. 
Three days later, gloriously, he overcame death, the only person in human history to be resurrected, giving us freedom, giving us forgiveness, and knowing that we can spend eternity as God, part of God's family. God's self-giving love rescues us, redeems us, forgives us, adopts us when we choose to put our faith and our trust and to follow him. This is glorious and wonderful good news. And the thing is this, is that when we grasp how good and how extraordinary Jesus is, it changes absolutely everything and we choose to follow him. The thing is this, when we receive the greatest gift that we can ever receive, when we found treasure that's beyond anything of any worth in the world, we'll choose to follow. We'll choose to give up our life for him. We'll choose to share it and give it away to spread the good news of Jesus. C.S. Lewis, in his essay, The Weight of Glory, says this. He said, we all pine. Each one of us is filled with longing. There's a longing within each one of us for joy, for love and for glory that we try to fill with all sorts of different things, with romance, with leisure, with our work, with our culture, with our achievements and with more and more possessions. But ultimately, none of those things satisfy our deep longing within us. And it's only as the Holy Spirit comes, the Holy Spirit of Jesus comes to fill us, that our lives are given and, and we find the assurance of a future inheritance that meets the need in our life. When the weight of his glorious, treasured presence transforms us and changes us and renews us, it changes everything. See, as the Holy Spirit fills our lives with love, with hope, with joy and peace, we start to realise what's possible in life. As the Holy Spirit cleanses us, washes away the dirt, the guilt and the shame and empowers us in a beautiful way to, to live life, a new life, that means that we can radiate God's love and his splendour to a needy world. It's only as the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon our lives that we can gloriously and wondrously come fully alive to live life in all its fullness. See, as the Holy Spirit gets to work in our lives, our relationships start to get healed. That the lonely start to find a family, that the poor are fed, that the sick are healed, that the oppressed are released and set free. That people start to discovering the calling in life that they were always intended to live. We find that rivers are able to flow in the desert, that what was dead has come back to life. That it's possible to trade ashes for beauty as God's blessing and God's goodness rests upon us. So the thing is this morning, when we Christians hear the message that we're to live for God's splendour and for God's glory. The way that often gets translated is that we just must do more and more things for God, running around, being busier, but achieving virtually nothing. Works righteousness never works. It's a dead end, always has been. What we see in scripture is that God is glorified when we get let God get to work in us. When we stop trusting in our own selves, our own achievements, our own things. And we stop in reverence and awe and receive the glorious and wonderful gifts that God has come to give us of his life. St Swithin's is not called to be man-centred. It's about discovering the heart of God, of who he is, all he's done for us, and then responding out of that. This morning, God's splendour is beyond comparisons, and he wants each one of us to experience it. St Swithin's is here to display God's splendour to the world. The vast majority of Bath seem unaware that someone or something so glorious, so wondrous, 
is in their midst. And each one of us this day, this week, are called to radiate and shine for God in this generation. You know, and God has chosen you and I to do that. That's an amazing privilege and an awesome thing to display God's splendour. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the good news that we've received. We thank you for your splendour, your majesty, your wondrousness and your power. Would you come afresh upon us in resurrection power to enable us to display your splendour to the world around us. In Jesus' name. Amen.